So uh, students will be continuing with the chapter that we had begun yesterday that was from the diary of Anne Frank. As uh, I have uh, told you earlier also, who was Anne Frank? She was a Jewish girl, yes. And uh, during the time of the World War II, how she and her family, they had to face, uh, you can say the brutal behavior of the German troops of the Nazi forces and to escape from being sent to the concentration camp to live a life of misery and for the fear of death. What did her father do? Otto Frank was the name of her father. He decided that his family would go into hiding. So in his warehouse, right? So warehouse uh, storage where things are kept. So over there, there were these two rooms, which is known as nowadays, it is known as a secret annex. And there Anne Frank, along with you know, like four more people, they lived over there. And they were in complete hiding from the rest of the people. And they had a few friends who helped them in their difficult times, right? But unfortunately, they were caught and the whole family was sent to the concentration camp. And uh, Otto Frank and Frank's father was the only survivor. And he uh, saw the diary of his uh, young daughter and he made uh, efforts to get it published. And rest as uh, we all see it is history. That's how this book, it became so successful. It got translated right from Dutch to uh, English and how it is a very popular book and maybe one of the most read autobiographies, right? Anne Frank, uh, yes, in uh, Amsterdam, there's a museum for, uh, for her and uh, yes, she is a figure or, you know, iconic figure. But before all this tragedy that happened, all the problems that she uh, had to face here, it uh, is there from the chapter that we are going to read she was like any normal teenager. Like uh, she loved going to school. She wanted to have friends. Yes. And uh, she was worried about her marks and whether she's going to pass and be promoted to the next class. Problems which ordinary teenagers have. Now, as a teenager, you know, like we all want friends. We want someone to talk to. We want people who will listen to us. We'll try to understand. Right, so you might have 40 friends in the classroom, but there are just a couple whom you are very comfortable with sharing your secrets and your worries and your concern. And Frank, although she was surrounded by so many people, even then she felt lonely. She did not have many friends or any friends, as she said. So whom did she make her friend? She made this diary her friend, right? It was a notebook which her grandmother had gave to her on her birthday and she really loved her grandmother. She spent a lot of time in her childhood with her grandmother. And so she started writing this diary. And what is a diary? You know, it is what a short writing in which you describe your feelings, your emotions, an incident which really impacted you, something that really brought about a change in you. So at a very young age, she started writing a diary it's very nice you know because uh, like uh, how time flies and we really forget the little moments in life that give us happiness and if we have a record you'll say ma'am we have pictures and all but uh, yes there are some things you know little incidents that happen you can't take pictures of everything you know Maybe, uh, yes, uh, you were praised or uh, you made uh, something at home and your parents were really happy about it. Or you felt you uh, made a big achievement. Uh, you know, you got a, a recognition, you got a prize or uh, you helped uh, someone out on the street. So little things which give you a satisfaction or some incident that made you really laugh a lot and you really want it to, to be there in record so that uh, when you read it again, it will bring that smile and laughter back to your face. So diary entry, I would uh, say, yes, it's a very important uh, way of uh, keeping our memories alive, okay? Yes, so let's have a look at the chapter now. So we had uh, started reading uh, this uh, 
chapter and uh, yes so writing in a diary is a really strange experience for someone like me so these these are extracts from the diary of and frank not only because i've never written anything before but also because it seems to me that later on neither i nor anyone else will be interested in the musings of the 13 year old school girl musings thoughts ideas of a 13 year old school girl who will want to read what she has written and if we say this if we look at this line we can say it was the understatement right she did not know that how popular her writing was going to be everybody would want to read the diary of this little girl oh well it doesn't matter i feel like writing and i have an even greater need to get all kinds of things off my chest off my chest right so she has something to share a problem something that's worrying her something that's troubling her so wanted to share that paper has more patience than people why paper does not speak paper paper does not complain so the paper does not get up and move away you know that okay fine enough i can't listen anymore it's not like that so it is going to listen to her patiently i thought of this saying on one of those days when i was feeling a little depressed and was sitting at my home with my chin in my hands bored and listless wondering whether to stay in or go out i finally stayed where i was brooding yes paper does have more patience since i'm not planning to let anyone else read the stiff backed notebook grandly referred to as a diary unless i should ever find a real friend it probably won't make a difference so she's saying it doesn't matter what i write because i'm not going to let anybody read my diary and any anyways who's interested in reading what a 13 year old is going to write now i'm back to the first point that prompted me to keep a diary in the first place i don't have a friend very surprising for a 13 year old not to have a friend let it be put it clearly since no one believe that a 13 year old girl is completely alone in the world and i'm not i have loving parents and a 16 year old sister and there are about 30 people i can call friends i have a family loving aunts and a good home no on the surface i seem to have everything except my one true friend so you don't need 20 people or 30 people to be friends with you one true friend is more than enough and this little girl has a big problem so is it a big problem or a small problem not having a friend what do you think yes big problem we need friends right all i think about when i'm with my friends is having a good time so when you're with your friends you just laugh and make noise and create disturbance and you're really not worried about life in particular or you're not worried about big problems here right i can't bring myself to talk about anything but ordinary everyday things she cannot talk her fears or anxieties or problems or worries that she has with them we don't seem to be able to get any closer and that's a problem right so when you start sharing your secrets when you have trust in another person when you start confiding in another person that is when you feel that you have become friends okay maybe it's my fault that we don't confide in each other in any case that's just how things are and unfortunately they're not liable to change this is why i started the diary she knows her nature i am not going to become very comfortable with these people i might not share so many things with these people and so she has decided i am going to write the diary my diary and uh, as it is yes diary is very patient does not have any problems to enhance the image of this long awaited friend in my imagination i don't want to jot down the facts in this diary the way most people do but i want the diary to be my friend and i am going to call this friend kitty so yes she treated the diary as a friend and just like you talk to a friend you share secrets with a friend so she would write that in her diary she even gave her diary a name that is kitty okay right we'll come to the questions in a short while 
since no one would understand a word of my stories to kitty if i were to plunge right in i'd better provide a brief sketch of my life much as i dislike doing so yes we'd love to know about and frank about her family about her we want to read more and more about her my father the most adorable father i've ever seen didn't marry my mother until he was 36 and she was 25 My sister Margaret was born in Frankfurt in Germany in 1926. I was born on 12 June 1929. I lived in Frankfurt until I was 4. My father emigrated to Holland in 1933. Right so when uh, she was 4 years old that was when uh, father emigrated to Holland. My mother Edith Hollander Frank went with him to Holland in September while Margaret and I were sent to Aachen to stay with our grandmother Margaret went to Holland in December and I followed in February when I was plumped down on the table as a birthday present for Margaret so what do we know about her family yes so she was born in Frankfurt Germany but later on her father emigrated to holland and why do you think he emigrated to holland yes because of the growing uh, you can uh, say discrimination which was happening with the jews so he left germany and moved on to a safer place right so first his pa- her parents went and then her elder sister and later on she joined them in the end and in the meanwhile while her parents were there she stayed with her grandmother okay is this clear right i started right away at the montessori nursery school i stayed there until i was 6 at which time i started in the first form the first class in the sixth form my teacher was mrs mr mrs cooperus the headmistress at the end of the year we were both in tears as we said a heart breaking farewell so who was mrs cooperus mrs cooperus was her teacher right her headmistress and uh, yeah uh, and uh, when she left school so they both were in tears in the summer of 1941 grandma fell ill and had to have an operation so my birthday passed with little celebration Grandma died in January 1942. No one knows how often I think of her and still love her. This birthday celebration in 1942 was intended to make up for the other, and Grandma's candle was lit along with me. So when they celebrated her birthday in 1942, how old was she then? Thirteenth birthday. So there was another candle, right? That was in the memory of Grandmother. The four of us are still doing well. and that bright brings me to the present date of 20 june 1942 and the solemn dedication of my diary okay yes so why do you think and provides a brief sketch of her life so can we yes margaret is her sister so who all were there in and frank's family her father Otto Frank, her mother, Edith Hollander Frank, right? Her older sister Margaret and Anne Frank, right? She talks about her grandmother, and uh, she spent a uh, major part of her childhood with her grandmother. She was deeply attached, yes, to her grandmother, and it was her grandmother who gifted her this notebook, right? And uh, she really wanted uh, to, you know, like cherish this beautiful gift. and so she writes her diary in it why was it a need for and frank to write the diary why did she take to write in the diary can anyone give me the answer please yes why did she start writing the diary because she did not have any friends yes just in core right yes is that the answer you were going to give right absolutely correct she did not have any friends she had uh, many friends but she did not have a true friend and why do we need a true friend why did uh, she need a true friend 
with whom she could share her feelings. She could discuss about uh, the problems in her life. And uh, yeah, so she could talk about that. So because she did not have a friend and she knew her nature, she was not such a person that she's going to share her problems, her worries uh, with, uh, you know, like people. So she started writing her diary. And why do you think she thinks it important to give an introduction about her family? Why did she start her diary entry about uh, introducing us to her family? Because she's going to talk about them a lot. She's going to talk about her family. And uh, yes, yeah, so she wants to tell us, or rather is she telling us or she's telling a friend? What was the name of uh, the new friend or the diary? Kitty, yes, yeah, so she was telling it. So she's written it in such a way that as if she's talking to her friend, okay? Yes. So, right, so, so we know about her friend, uh, we, Kitty. We know about why she didn't have any friends. We know about her childhood, okay? And why does uh, Anne Frank say that paper has more patience than people? Why does she say that? Why does she say that paper has more patience than people? Yes, why? Because paper will there listen, will not speak up, will not complain, unlike human beings. Okay, now let's look at her diary entry. Yeah, what are the date of this diary entry? Look at it, Saturday, 20th June, 1942. Dearest Kitty, our entire class is quaking in its boots. Quaking, shaking. Yes, uh, absolutely correct, uh, Nishta, Amitpal, very nice. Good answers. The reason, of course, is the forthcoming meeting in which the teachers decide who will move up to the next form and who will be kept back. It's like, yes, the end of the session and they're going to decide who's going to pass, who's going to be promoted, who's going to stay back. Right? And yes, that is a problem for us. We are really afraid of that time of the year. Half the class is making bets. G and I, G N and I laugh ourselves silly at the two boys behind us. C N and Jacques, who have staked entire holiday savings on their bet. So see, children are betting also who's going to pass, who's going to fail. No, I, from morning to night, it's you're going to pass. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Even G's pleading glances and my angry outbursts can't calm them down. So yes, these two boys sitting behind and the whole day they keep on making guesses. You're going to pass. I'm not. And they have placed entire, you know, savings, money that they have had, you know, on this uh, simple question. Are we going to pass or not? Even G's pleading glances and my angry outbursts, G, her friend, uh, when she sits in the classroom, my angry outbursts can't calm them down. If you ask me, there are so many dummies that about a quarter of the class should be kept back. Dummies here, a reference to not very intelligent people who don't deserve to be promoted to the next class. But teachers are the most unpredictable teachers on earth. Please underline this. What made Anne Frank say that teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth? Students are aware themselves that where I stand, should I be promoted? Should I be detained? But teachers, you know, you never know who's going to, what the result is going to be, whom they're going to pass and whom they're going to fail, okay? That is why they say this. I'm not so worried about my girlfriends and myself. I know I'm safe. We'll make it. The only subject I'm not sure about is maths. Anyway, all we can do is wait. Until then, we keep telling each other not to lose heart. And see, such a beautiful way she has written her diary. You can actually feel her fear. You can actually feel that happiness that she has, you know, like, of course, with what is happening in the class. And she's worried about her results, just like the others. I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There are nine of them, seven men and two women. Mr. Kiesing, the old fogey who teaches math, was annoyed with me for ages because I talk so much. So she was very talkative in the class. 
Who was the maths teacher? Mr. Kissing. Who was Mrs. Cooperus? Can you tell me who was Mrs. Cooperus? She was the headmistress and her teacher also, right? Now, Mr. Kissing is a maths teacher. Please remember this. He was annoyed with me for ages because I talked so much. After several warnings, he assigned me extra homework, an essay on the subject, a chatterbox. A chatterbox? What can he write about that? I'd worry about that later, I decided. I jotted down the title in my notebook, tucked it in my bag and tried to keep quiet. So Anne was... Uh, yeah, right. Okay. So why are teachers unpredictable? Because they promote dummies and intelligent people stay back. Okay. It, 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 not bhi nahi hota contrasting result. Okay. Yes. But of course, uh, things that I uh, don't expect to happen might happen. That is why he says that teachers are unpredictable. Now, who is a chatterbox? Who do you think is a chatterbox? Who is a chatterbox? Anne was a chatterbox? Yes, she talked a lot in class. And uh, what was the punishment that the math teacher gave her? What's the punishment? That she had to write an essay on the chatterbox. What can you write about a chatterbox? If I ask you to write uh, about a chatterbox, what are you going to write? Why do people talk so much? Why do you think uh, people uh, talk? Why, especially in the classroom? Why is it so difficult to keep quiet in the classroom? Because it's their nature to talk a lot. And so they have to talk. So whether it is in the classroom or at home, anyway, they'll keep on talking. Is it? Yes. But writing an essay on that, it is going to be a difficult task. Now let's see what Anne is going to. Okay, because at home they're quiet. They can't talk much. And so when they're in school, they are uncontrollable. They'll go on chatter, chatter, chatter. Is it? Yes, Amritpal, is that so? So they talk a lot. But is it right to keep on talking all the time in the classroom? Is it right? Because with your friends, you're so excited, you can't keep quiet. It's not right. So you have to keep quiet uh, in the classroom, especially when teaching is going on, right? But uh, yes, so Anne uh, could not keep quiet. So that is why she got this punishment. So she had to write an essay. Now let's see what she's going to write here. Of course, she's a smart young girl. She's going to write a nice essay on this. That evening, after I had finished the rest of my homework, the note about the essay caught my eye. I began thinking about the subject while chewing the tip of my fountain pen. So we can imagine her chewing a fountain pen and thinking, what am I going to write? I got this essay to write. Anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words, just like you people, when you have long answers, what do you do? When you don't get the answer, you start writing the summary of the chapter. You write the whole story. Let it look like a long answer, isn't it? So she's wondering, I, is she saying I can write uh, many things and leave spaces and it will appear I've written an essay? But no, but the trick was to come up with convincing arguments to prove the necessity of talking. So, right, so she is a smart girl. So she's saying, I will have to write a convincing argument why I am so talkative. I thought and thought and suddenly I had an idea. I wrote the three pages Mr. Kiesing had assigned me and was satisfied. I argued that talking is a student's trait and that I will do my best to keep it under control. Trait, quality. If you're a student, you're bound to be talkative. Is it true? Yes? Are we all talkative in the class? Are we? When, uh, yeah, you had your offline classes, of course you did uh, talk a lot. You had a good time with your friends and you loved talking to them. Right. So here, so he's giving that uh, she's giving that argument that it is a student's trait. It is a quality. And uh, yes, I will try to keep it under control. Is uh, only being talkative a student's quality? There are many qualities that a student should have apart from being a talkative person. 
but that I would never be able to cure myself of the habit since my mother talked as much as I did, if not more, and that there's not much you can do about inherited traits. How original and how wonderful. Look at her, how has she justified her talkative nature? So how has she justified her talkative nature? It's a student's quality, students have to be talkative. Right? And secondly, she says that my mother was also very uh, talkative, so I can't uh, control myself. Do you think uh, being uh, talkative is uh, there, it's a, a genetic trait, it is something you inherit? Is it? So, but look at the explanation and how she is justifying. So, what do you think about Anne Frank as a teenager? Can you relate to her? Is she as smart as you or is she smarter? Can you relate to Anne Frank as a teenager? Yes, she is so relatable. 